G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Now I had planned tonight to start filming some videos for Spectre, which I spoke about the other night. But I couldn't find any power cables for any of the cameras. I got lights out, microphones out, three cameras, set up a table. And when you're filming videos like I like to film them, you kind of need to have multiple cameras because you know I don't like to stuff around with moving cameras and stuff around. I forget what I'm talking about. Um, and running on batteries just isn't reliable. So, um, until I find those cables, we're stuck with one camera. So whilst we only have one camera, I thought we'd sit down and start trying to figure out how to play Spectre. Now, unlike how to play videos I've done in the, in the past, you know, if you've seen my Saga videos in the past, you know, those rules were very easy for me to learn and therefore um, very easy for me to show you. Um, but Spectre, on the other hand, it's a slightly more complicated game. And, and because the rulebook, um, well, it's not because the rulebook um, is, is, is not uh, fantastically uh, laid out. That's not the problem. Um, because the game is more complex than Saga, um, or many of the other simple games that I enjoy playing, you know, for me at least, you know, it's, there's a lot of things to go through. Um, pages to flip back and forward and you know try and figure out where uh, you know different rules and all that sort of stuff are so until we can get multiple cameras I thought the first thing we'd have a look at is how do I start playing Spectre now Spectre being a story driven game and a narrative driven game you really need to have a scenario in mind now the rule book has at the back here um, a whole bunch of cool missions and scenarios I think there's six in here um, Scenario examples. Here we go. Mission card. Attack and defend. Um, mentoring. What's... Uh, here we go. Capture and kill. Or capture and extract a high value target or a high value informant. Um, survive the night. Um, covert. Chaos. Etc. Etc. There's a bunch of scenarios in the book here. And the scenario will tell you the forces involved in the, in the battle. Um, what the, how many figures there are. What they're equipped with. You know, if there's any off-table assets, what the victory conditions are, and any specific mission uh, um, objectives, etc. It'll, it'll tell you the table size and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, that in my mind's not the best place to start in terms of learning this game. Um, uh, well, that's, that's debatable. It depends on whether you just want to get into it and start playing or if you really want to start to understand the game. From my perspective, the first thing that we need to do is understand how these forces that these missions talk about are, you know, comprised or how they're built and how they're developed. So, we need to go back to the front of the rulebook. And if I had multiple cameras set up, you know, I could show you that. Maybe I'll take a picture of this rulebook and, you know, slide it over here. Um, but at the front of this rulebook, it talks about the different sorts of models. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, very, very briefly, there's 12 different levels of models. Um, typically, your good guys are generally, you know, uber powerful guys versus, you know, militia or trained guys. Um, most of the stuff that I see around, you know, people want the elite guys. They want the professional fighters. So the first thing to do is have a look here on page 14 um, of your rule book. The different levels of fighters. From the bottom up to the top, untrained civilians, militiamen, militia squad leaders, militia commanders, and then we go trained, professional, and elite soldiers. So I've got a couple of figures here. Both figures are 28 mil figures from Eureka. One of their little uh, um, Somali militiamen, which I've painted up as, a, as an ISIS fighter, and one of their US Force recon miniatures, which you know I've just painted as, you know, whatever. He's, you know, he's got some sort of camo on. Who knows? So let's have a look at our Force Recon guys. So we'll just write down here US Recon. Now this may not be terribly interesting, but you know, in the essence of trying to understand and learn the game, before we actually get into the semantics of you know, this turn sequence here, initiative, command phase, um, movement and tactical actions phase, and the combat phase, let's just figure out how we put a force together. Um, because it can get really you know, in depth, and then you know, this is part of you know, that scenario slash story driven uh, aspect of, uh, of the game. So I'm going to write down here um, my US Recon guy and my ISIS fighter, right? So putting together your list, so to speak. Now, I don't want, I'm not massively interested in playing uber powerful games, so I'm not going to take anything that's elite. 
Um, but this guy certainly is professional. Now, if you're one of those gamers that want to play like a realistic scenario, then, you know, if, you, if your elite guy is supposed to be elite, choose an elite guy. But, you know, I'm you know, not a historical guy. I'm, they're just miniatures for me. It's just a game. Um, so I'm going to choose a professional soldier, which is, uh, you know, level 7. So I'll write down here level 7. It costs 10 points. That's just for the man, right? In some clothes. That's it. Now I need to, uh, let's, let's write down our ISIS fighter while we're here because you know we're gonna flip through this book back and forward. My ISIS fighter is gonna be a, a trained soldier and he costs five points. So he's level four and he costs five points. Now I need to flip through the book, try and find some equipment and some weapons and stuff for these guys. So we'll flip through to you know this section here for profiles, page 65. Now let's do my ISIS fighter because you know he's pretty simple. What's he got? Looks like he's got an AK, AK-47. So under rifles and carbines, um, or carbines, however you want to pr pronounce it. I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, carbines I hear quite often, and you know a lot of Americans say carbines. Whatever, Viv. Um, he's got an assault rifle, and an assault rifle costs me four points. So we'll put four points, and we'll put AK-47 um, in an assault rifle. That's pretty much all this guy's got. Right, so my trained ISIS fighter costs me a total of nine points. Now, my US Force Recon guy. So this guy's got a little bit more stuff. He's carrying some sort of weapon here. It looks like some sort of um, M4. Looks like an M4, so he's got a carbine. And um, let's put M4, and that costs eight points. He's got an underslung grenade on this. So let's flip through now. Somewhere in here, grenade launchers, under barrel grenade launcher, that'll cost me five points. So let's put on there this uh, UBGL. Um, he's got some sort of sights on here. Um, in the book, there's a whole bunch of different sorts of sights and stuff. Where are they? They're over the page here somewhere. Uh, weapons, weapons, machine guns, sniper rifle, sidearms. Hmm, hmm, here we go, you see now, this is where, where the hell's it going? Here we go. Specialist gear, no, here we go, weapon attachments. All right, let's just say he's got a laser sight. Laser sight, cost three points. And on and on I go. Let's give this guy some grenades, right? We want him to have some grenades. Um, thrown a non-lethal. Yeah, nah. Uh, well, let's give him some smoke grenades because, you know, he might want to throw some smoke grenades around. They're five points. Smoke grenades. Um, mines and IEDs. Combat gear. Maybe you want some body armor. Mm, let's give him some body armor. Why not? Body arm, that costs 10 points. Right, oh, here goes my pen. Now, all right, one more thing. We, we want this guy to have some grenades. Why are the grenades not with all the other things or am I just missing them? Frag grenades, there we go, five points. All right, so you can tell, oh, come on, pen. So what have we got? We got uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, 28, and um, 30, there we go, 36 points. So my, there we go, I've got two guys done. My US Recon, he cost me 36 points and he's got a whole bunch of gear. And I've got an ISIS fighter and he costs nine points. Um, so, you know, I'm roughly getting almost four of these ISIS fighters. Um, per US recon guy. So there we go. That's the first part, I suppose, of you know starting to play Spectre is scoping out some guys. Um, now, you know, there's lots of stuff in here, lots of different sorts of equipment. And as I mentioned, there's specialist gear, breaching tools, ballistic shields, tactical ladders, diving suits, a whole bunch of different sorts of 
scopes and weapon attachments and you know a whole bunch of stuff for vehicles and different sorts of mines that you know you, want, you might want your uh, your uh, uh, terrorists to use or whatever whole bunch of different sorts of direct fire weapons um, heaps of stuff some of which elite guys can have some of which you know um, uh, professional or trained guys can have in here that's one thing that I need to check right is can my guys actually have the stuff that I've given them you know that's here and here this four selection chart um, oh, so much stuff you know it's I guess once you've gone through this and you've done it and you've spec'd out you know your teams um, I guess you get a little bit more used to it but you know I've only flipped through this and and put together, you know, fake, you know, army lists uh, a couple of times, and I'm still getting used to where everything is in this list here. Anti-personnel victim-operated devices. <laughs> um, flame throwers, phosphorus grenades, multi-blast weapons. Anyway, so there we go. There's a, you know, a first look at starting to figure out how to play Spectre. And I use that term, you know, intentionally. Let's try and figure out how to play Spectre. Because at this point in time, you know, <laughs> despite having read the rule book so many times, I still really um, don't know how to play and couldn't show you how to play. So let's figure it out together. There we go. We've spec out a couple of guys. You can pick up your spec, And that... It's why I don't like filming on batteries alone. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I don't know where I was. There we go. That's that's a very quick look at you know the first part of you know learning to play Spectre, putting together our army lists. Um, you could use the scenarios in the background, or you know there's the process of, of of putting the figures together. You recruit a guy and then go fishing around in the different sorts of equipment sections for his equipment, and you can see the disparity in someone who's, excuse me, really well armed versus, you know, a typical militiaman or, you know, a trained fighter who's just been given the bare essentials to get out there and fling bullets around. Um, there we go. Um, when we come back next time, I guess we'll look at something else. What that will be, I'm not sure. Depends if I can find the bloody power cables for these cameras. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. See ya.